The Small Business Show, episode 369 for Wednesday, March 2nd, 2022. Welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, where we are small businessing every week. Sponsors for this episode include hunterdouglas.com slash SBS, where you can go get your free style, get smarter design guide. We'll talk more in depth about that a little bit later in the episode. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And here in Lafayette, California, I am Shannon Jean. How are you, man? Happy, I'm good. Uh, yeah. Good, good. Happy uh, seventh anniversary the the show is officially seven years old now right yeah as of february 19th i believe we hit it's our good. Uh, we hit Isn't, number seven they, yeah don't they call seven the the age of reason so when you start to oh. learn how to reason things so maybe we'll get better maybe maybe <laughs> maybe I, look i'm not counting on it but no guarantees <laughs> that's right that's right that's right yeah that's right hey i know we're we're doing this show today all about uh how to create meetings that matter, which I think is a really important topic. Yes. And, um, Gosh, but I wanted to, what a waste of time meetings can be. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. And we're not having a meeting today. We're actually having a discussion. Ah, um, okay. Yeah. It's a difference. There's a difference. Huh. And, but before we start that, I, I wanted to share an experience that I had a couple of times in the last few months and, and get your take on it and ask a question because I don't, uh, it's kind of a sensitive topic. I have no I idea to... what you're about to ask me either. So like, like Correct. there is zero prep for this other than you told me I have a sensitive topic and I'm not going to tell you anything else until we start recording. So yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I really have uh, questions about this and I am really seeking the truth. I don't know what the truth is. So I want to preface sure. that. You're asking the wrong I guy. Be... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know whether we're going to be able to find that truth today, actually. Okay. So I, I'd love some feedback from listeners. And I want to just remind everyone that, you know, uh, nuance is very important when we're having these discussions. So let me just share this. Uh, There's no freaking way everybody's ever going to hear this. With the way you've set it up, I'm definitely going to cut <laughs> it from the show. But let's go. Let's see what happens. <laughs> let's go anyway. Let's go anyway. <laughs> you can, that's, I know I can't get fired, so it's okay. Oh, it doesn't matter. Um, right. Yeah. 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 So I've, I've had a couple of meetings in the, I'd say the last three months where people have asked me, hey, I know this friend or relative that wants to uh, start a new business, buy a business. Would you mind having coffee with them and and just just talk with them, hear them out, maybe give them some advice, your experience, that kind of stuff, right? Sure. Just very casual. Basically what we do on the show here. Yeah, exactly. And, and I love doing that, as our listeners know. We talk about this every week. So twice in the last three months out of a few of these I've had, I've had this statement made to me. Here comes the uh, sensitive part. Uh, two of these gentlemen said to me, the reason I want to, one of the reasons I want to start a company or buy a company is that I can no longer move up in the, the corporate channel because of certain requirements that are set in place by this large company I work for. And those are like diversity, equity, and inclusion requirements. Got it. Okay. Yep. And it's a sensitive topic, and I don't know really much about it other than I love diversity of everything. You know, sure. gender, skin colors, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, beliefs, uh, you know, all kinds of ideas, all that stuff. And so I, I asked them, and one of them said to me, yeah, and I've got a couple of, of – young boys and I'm really worried about them. So I want to create this company that they could hopefully take over someday. And, and, and I was like, wow, you know, it's the first time I had ever heard this. And I just wonder, is, is it just purely anecdotal? Is it their take on things or are we, will we see more of these folks that feel like they can't climb the ladder or get higher, I guess, in the, in, you know, I don't know anything about corporations, thankfully. Um, will, are those folks going to go out on their own more to, because they feel they can't get any further in those companies? That's interesting. So, I, I mean, it, like I'll, I'll say it yeah, out loud. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, like, I'm guessing that these are, you know, older white guys, right? Like that have I would said say this to you. Yeah, probably, you know, eh, not too older. Not too 30s, old, but white guys. 30s, like, 40s. Yeah, white guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, okay. I mean, it, it, like, it certainly makes sense that in today's world, I mean, very clearly, there's less of a priority put on hiring 
white men because there's plenty yes. of white men, uh, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, right? Yeah, and yeah. and so Absolutely. it's like we want to make it. it more diverse in this company, in this section of our company, in the you yeah. know this particular rank of our company, whatever it is. And so if we can find someone that is equally uh, skilled that yeah. doesn't look like everybody else that's here in that box. Yeah. Let's yeah. bring them in. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, yeah. I, you know, it's interesting. My son goes to Reed college uh -huh. and the, the, he is in computer science and they are having problems hiring people at, at, at in computer science over the last year and a half. No great surprise, right? Like we've had that conversation yes. and they, they did hire, they were able to hire one person last year, but uh, it was, you know, yet another white guy. And yeah. that was in many of the circles there seen as a failure. Now, I mean, it filled a, it filled a position that absolutely needed to be filled. Yeah. So as someone who is spending an ungodly sum of money oh, yeah. to have my son learn computer science from the people that Reed picks to teach him computer science, having, you know, warm, educated bodies fill those roles. That's critical. That's yeah. sort of the important thing. So I don't see what they did last year as a failure, though I completely understand why in a perfect world, you'd want to hire people and make it, you know, diversity can, it can only help. It's awesome. It, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Right, uh, you know, right. People with different experiences. All kinds of diversity, Di socioeconomic background, diversity of thought, everything. It's, it it's one of the, better, yeah. it, it's one of the things I've loved about playing music is that mm. I am naturally exposed to people that, well, maybe the, the, a better way to say it is there is no common, necessarily common you know, socioeconomic background yeah. that everyone comes from when, when you assemble in a rehearsal room or on a stage, it's, can yeah, you yeah. play? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Right. That's like right. that, You're that's it. And, and it yeah. like, I've showed up at rehearsals and it's, it's weird. You know, I mean, I have to think about this retroactively because I don't show up thinking, well, it's going to be weird if not everybody there is a white guy like me. It, it, <laughs> yeah, right. Like that's never crossed my mind, no, it, but, and I don't, but in retrospect, looking back at it, you know, there's, there's I, every, any time I show up for a rehearsal, if I, I mean, if it's, you know, I'm being brought in new to the scenario, unless I know who's going to be there, I have zero expectations about someone's gender or, it you know, how, mu how much money they make or yeah, no. what color their skin is or what color their eyes are or any of that. It's, I, I can they play? And usually it's, Absolutely. I, my trust is in the person who organized it. And I, you know, I either know yeah. that they are good at getting people who can play or they aren't. And that really is my barometer of whether or not I want to do the gig is do yeah. I trust that you're going to assemble people who can play? That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and, and I oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No. And I love that about, and it, it took is. me a long time to even realize that that was the case, but, but you know, with everything else, you know, where my kids go to school and I mean, my kids go to public school, went to public school. Now they go to private school because they're in college right. and, you know, it's a whole different thing. But my kids went to public school. But, you know, the area we live in, it's all fairly homogenized and all that stuff. And sure. and it, it but that's that was not the case where I grew up. Like I, I was there were more white people in my high school than any other you know, ethnic group, but we were not the majority. I see. Okay. Right. Yeah. And and that seemed normal to me because obviously it's what I grew up with. That is not the case where we currently live, you know, or, or anything like that. But, and that perhaps is the reason that I, I realized at one point, it's probably 10 years ago, like, wow, I really appreciate this about music is there is. That is a great thing. The yeah. only thing that matters is, can you play and can you show up for the gigs? Like you got to be reliable. Yeah, you got to be accountable, got to be reliable. Accountable, yeah, reliable sense. and, and somewhat personable. Like you got to be able to get along with people. Otherwise it's just yeah. not going to last. But one gig, you can be a jackass as long as you play. It's all good. As long as you play. Yeah. yeah that's it. Yeah, that's, so I, I don't, it's the only it's barometer just, that mattered. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's just interesting to me in the sense that. If, if if one person mentioned it to me, I, I'd be like, oh, that's, that's well, okay, that's your take on it. Or whatever. Sure. But yeah. a se hearing it a second time in, in a few month period, I was like, well, I wonder if this is, you know, uh, a trending or is there some other thing I don't understand? So I'm always looking for 
I'm always looking to be educated. I say here on the show, I always learn the most. It's one yeah. of the reasons I do the show, to meet new people, to listen to your input, to listen to our our, our listeners, all that kind of stuff. So feedback I, I don't at businessshow.co. Really, yeah. And I don't have anything else to say about it other than I just thought it was interesting and I wanted to share it, you know, uh, put whatever nuance on it, ask that question. And, you know, I would love to hear our listeners take on it. Feedback at businessshow.co, like you said. And Yeah. Uh, no, it's an interesting topic. I, I had it not... I've I've certainly heard commentary ab about it. I, I I can't imagine yeah. any of us haven't, but I've never heard that commentary. Like I, the only way I can, and it's a it's a fascinating twist on, on how is. things have been. Like you know, yeah, it's yeah. not lost on me. But it's interesting right. that you know the 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 old white guys in the room, and I, and I realize I'm I'm very much you know generalizing here, uh, right. are the ones that are saying now are the ones that are saying, well, the only way I can get ahead of my company is, is by, right. you know, taking, taking my destiny into my own hands in yep. the past that, that might have been reserved for exactly the, the people opposite. that, yeah. That, yeah. Right. Or they couldn't even get the job or they I was going to say, it might uh, not have even loan uh, right. or, you know, a mortgage or they couldn't move into certain neighborhoods. I, I absolutely get that and respect that Oh, part yeah, of it's, our history. It's, ter it's terrible. And, it's not a part of our oh, history I'm proud of. Yeah. Of course not. Of course not. And um, a part of our history that I personally was not involved in um, because I was just a little kid. But right. it's important to address those things and to, uh, you know, how do you give all this, you know, give these opportunities to folks that uh, people that maybe otherwise wouldn't have had it without, I don't know if there's a way to do it without, uh, isolating out another, you know, demographic. I, I don't know. It, it's really a fascinating it's a, discussion. It's a hard uh, balance. I mean, it, it, is, it would right? be easy for me to say, well, let's take what I've learned from my, you know, musical experiences and just apply that and pick whatever the person is that's going to do the job and, and ask them, you know, can you play right? The, the, yes. the equivalent of can you play right? You know, can you, yeah, yeah. can you do the job? But like, if that, that's not, likely to solve this problem. I was having this Probably. conversation with a friend of mine uh, and I'll attribute her. I, I, I hope I don't put the wrong words. I hope I don't attribute the wrong words to her. It's Allison Sheridan who does a, does a podcast called no Silicast uh, at podfeet.com. And she is a retired now uh, engineer. And okay. as you might have guessed from the way I described her, also female, right? So, yeah. and the fact that she's retired probably also tells you that she came up at a time when that wasn't all that Tough common. to be an engineer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for, a, for a woman. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And so she, she, and she did very well at Raytheon. I mean, had an illustrious career, all of that stuff. She's very sensitive to to this sort of thing, as you might imagine. Yeah. And it, in, in, at, at times, it comes out as her mission to help, you, you know, further women engineers and women yeah. in STEM in general. Right. And she said something right. to me recently, and this is the part I hope I don't get wrong. And when I say recently in the last three or four years where she said, you know, I, I've, I would, my reaction naturally would be to rail against the companies when that, that wind up not hiring women to fill their STEM roles. She said, but as I did more research, especially in recent years, things have changed. There are less women going to school for and interested in those STEM roles. She says, so it's hard for me to now fault companies for not hiring women, female engineers for her, for lo looking yeah. know, deeper, deeper. Right. Things. And, but, yeah. but she also said now, of course, this, this furthers the problem because yeah. if, if young girls don't see people who appear to be similar to them, AKA other women in this case, yes. you know, if they don't see them in those roles, they are far less likely to take the path of putting themselves in those roles and getting the education that, 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 that that's a really good point. So it's and a tough, is, I don't, that's yeah. the, that's the part of this. That's like, well, simply asking someone, can you play doesn't yeah. solve the problem. Right. Well, and that's that nuance that yeah. I was trying to looking for. And I'm talking about because you, the same could be said of positions in corporate where, Hey, you know, we want to show, you know, young, you know, young black kids, uh, you know, African Americans or or Hispanic kids. Look, th this is the path. You move up. You're successful. Yeah. You're accountable. And look what you can achieve in, you know, become a senior vice president or of whatever, whatever, and, and do these positions. So, I get that you you uh, that has real value, 
and maybe there's just pain there. There's going to be some pain to go around while that. Yeah. Change is messy. I don't know. Yeah, Yeah, it is messy. It's always messy. Right. And, and you have, there have to be the trendsetters, right? I mean, if, if there's a new trend that's going to be set, there need to be those people that do that. And there are, there are, and have been, but there just needs to be more of them. And, and perhaps what we're, you know, we're not going to, we're not here to solve this problem. We like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's much bigger than us, trying to, but no, you yeah. know, it, at least in, in my enterprises and, and things that I do being aware that this problem exists and being sensitive to it, like, okay, if you encounter one of those people who is the trendsetter and also is right for your organization, well, now you can be part of that. Right. You know, and yeah, that's not yeah. a terrible thing. So yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I, no, yeah, it is interesting. Yeah. It's fascinating. Yeah, so, I'm glad you brought it up so you, and I don't think I'm going to delete it. I think I'm going to keep it. <laughs> oh, <woo-hoo. laughs> that's awesome. That's good. I can got another year on the small business that's show, right. folks. <laughs> Your con- our our contract is renewed. We, yeah, this that's is right. a 50-50 j- venture. So, yeah, you know, we, exactly. we're accountable you to one another. You me so fast. That's yeah. Right, that's right. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, but, yeah, but I'm, and so thank you for, for listening to me and educating me a bit and then bringing out some of that nuance. Mm. And uh, I think it's great. And uh, it's one of the reasons why I'm here. Yeah, same. No, this is great. I'm glad you brought that up. That's a, it's going to, I'm, I'm about to leave on vacation for a week and you're going to, this is definitely going to be one of those things that swims around in my head now. Uh, and that's a good thing. So yeah, cool. it's good. Perfect. Right hey, I, I want to have our conversation about how the right way to have meetings and whether you should even have meetings at all. The next thing that I would like to do is talk about our sponsor, if that works for you. Yeah, that sounds great, man. Let's do it. All right. Hey, who doesn't love to live well, to be perfectly at ease, in comfort, and in style? Well, our sponsor, Hunter Douglas, can help you do just that with their innovative window shade designs that have gorgeous fabrics and control systems so advanced, they can actually be scheduled to automatically adjust to their optimal position throughout the day. You've got to go check this out. Go to HunterDouglas.com slash SBS. That's where you can see how these shades diffuse harsh sunlight and cast this beautiful glow across the room. You can see how they make it work so that you can enjoy the view outside the window while protecting your privacy inside the window. And these shades provide superior insulation that keeps you warmer in winter, cooler in summer, and they lower your utility bills while you're at it. Very cool stuff. In fact, speaking of cool stuff, when you tap into Hunter Douglas's power view technology, this is the thing that you use with your phone or whatever. Your shades can be set to automatically reposition for the perfect balance of light, privacy and insulation morning, noon and night. I don't have any of these yet, but after visiting HunterDouglas.com slash SBS, I'm very much looking forward to getting some. So. You can live beautifully with Hunter Douglas, enjoying greater convenience, enhanced style, and increased comfort in your home throughout the day. Visit HunterDouglas.com slash SBS today for your free Style Get Smarter design guide that has fresh takes, creative ideas, and smart solutions for dressing your windows. Again, HunterDouglas.com slash SBS for your free design guide, and our thanks to Hunter Douglas for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon, I I was recently asked to join our town council to run for our, our town oh, council. Yeah. Congratulations. I, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. Uh, I did not. I, I opted okay. out. Uh, but yeah. And the reason was, I, and I've said this a, a couple of times. I probably said, I know I've said it on this show, but it, it's relevant to this. You know, our town council meets, I think what, twice a month or something like that. Okay. And I've attended some of these meetings when there is an issue that is, uh, of import to me and they drive me crazy yeah, because awesome. it, because they're, they just, it, they go on endlessly and it's, it's mostly people, you know, that it appears to me. And I, I don't mean to be, I'm going to be disrespectful and I apologize for that. I, I don't mean to minimize the fact that these people are effectively <laughs> donating their time for the greater good of our town. I appreciate, I do really appreciate that. Uh, And, and I would love it if I, and I have helped out. I I have participated in our town government in different ways, not on the town council, but I've, I've volunteered as part of committees and things like that over time. I I definitely appreciate it, but these meetings, it would drive me crazy. And so anytime somebody 
says to me, you should join town council. The first thing I tell him is you will elect me and you will rue the day that you did. So you think you want me on town council and I will be a hundred percent transparent with what my intentions are to, for town council. And you will know that and you will cast your vote for me. And then when you see me implement these things that I've said, you will hate me because it's going to completely derail how our town council works. And the, the thing that would be absolutely be okay. mandatory for me, absolute like deal breaker. I will not show up at a single meeting until this one thing is instituted. And again, I would run on this. So no one's surprised. I'm not looking to bait and switch anyone is there must be a hard end time set for every meeting. And the reason for that oh, is, <laughs> okay, well, there you go. The reason for that is that I want, I know that when you have a deadline, decisions get made, right? You look at the agenda, you get it done. So that would be my, my mandatory deal breaker. Once a hard end time is set, I will come and show up for the meeting. The next thing I will try to do, but this isn't necessarily a deal breaker, but it's really important, is I want to get rid of the tables and the chairs in the room. Uh, I don't want Another people on my list. <laughs> I, also on your list. Okay. I don't want people sitting around, you know, proselytizing and listening to themselves. I want them focused on the agenda, focused on finishing the job, pr you know, results, not process. And, and, and then we, we GTFO, we get out of there for the, for the night. Like we get the business done and we go and without tables and chairs in the room, you know, we're far more incentivized to focus right. on the matter at hand. So these are the things I say, and I, I, I mean these, I, I think it's crazy. I don't think our town council would ever actually work with these policies in place. Uh, but I know that Probably meetings not. that I run do and things are efficient. Now, of course, people that, you know, people know this when, when they come to work for me. So this isn't some great surprise. Uh, it doesn't work for everybody though. And I, I so I'm, I'm focused on efficiency. I, 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 I like everyone to remember that if you spend an hour in a meeting with five people, you've spent five hours of time. Yeah, it's crazy. So anyway, I'm, I'm prattling yeah, so, on here to introduce us no, to this no. topic, but yeah, I think it's an yeah, important it, one. Yeah, it's valuable. I think there is a distinction between uh, private business meetings and public meetings. That, of course. You know, a yeah. whole nother, I don't know much about, but I, I know that there's lots of, of that stuff. But I think, uh, you know, one of the things you mentioned in, in, in your lead up to that is and it's the first thing on my list, is really asking yourself, do we need to have a meeting? Can we have a Slack conversation? Can we make a phone call, a quick call? Can we text? Can we, you know, whatever you're using, Asana, whatever, you know. Yeah, whatever uh, your, 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 your water cooler stuff. is. Yeah, exactly. Can you, can you have that, quote, meeting through that uh, other, you know, avenue to save everybody time? And if you, well, yeah, we need to get together. Uh, I, I don't like regularly scheduled meetings. Maybe that's why I don't like public meetings either because it's like, oh, we're meeting here on this date, whether we have something to talk about or not. Or not. I don't like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I don't like that. Um, and so I think once you've identified that, yes, we do need to have a meeting, then you need to say really clearly, you need to state what is the purpose. And I, and I read a quote from a guy named Christopher Frank. He was a VP at American Express. I have no idea other than that who he is. Sure. But he, he always would ask, what exactly are we meeting about? And he would require everyone to be able to answer that question with five words oh, or less. Yeah. And if you could not, he wouldn't meet. When you can, when you can tell me in five words or less why we're meeting, let's schedule the meeting, which I thought was, was kind of an interesting way to do it, right? And really to, to focus in on what you're trying to achieve and then turn that into a very clear agenda, Right. So oh, everybody so make, knows. make the answer to that question the foundation then of your agenda. Yep. That's oh, right. and you can then break it out into little pieces. Okay, the, we're this is our, uh, you know, purpose here. Yeah, we're breaking it down based on it, what everybody says. We're all on the same page, uh, and now we're going to here's the agenda based on that, and then with that agenda, keeping it in front of everybody. Very important. Yes. Whether you have it up on a whiteboard, yes. up on a slide, whatever. You're could, if that way you're there to work within the agenda and nothing else, right? Th this is what we're here for. Um, and, to, and to keep everybody on track uh, so you can get to that decent end time that we're going to talk more about. Oh, but, uh, that's brilliant. But the, Christopher yeah. Frank is still 
a VP oh. at American Express. There He's been go. there 13 years. I found him on LinkedIn on and I have followed him on LinkedIn. So nice. I recommend That's we all do that. Great. Yeah. 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 And then another th thing I always love to do because I found, especially if you're working uh, or having meetings, uh, and, and my background's always with technicians and they may not be the most vocal uh, or engineers that, that maybe they didn't speak up quite as much, is I would try to stack the deck before the meeting. Once we had this I, this agenda and I knew what our purpose was, um, and you know, I also identified who needed to be at the meeting, no spectators, everybody has to be there for a reason, yeah. is I would ask those people to bring a question related to this agenda to the meeting oh, before yeah. the meeting. Right. I would just say, I just go up to them and say, Hey, would you mind, uh, you know, do you have any questions about this agenda? And if they said, no, I, I would, I, maybe I, I would help prompt them and suggest, would you mind asking? I'd like, you know, I wouldn't mind talking about this. Would you ask a question about this topic? Because that way I could go around and say, Hey, do you have, you know, anybody want to say anything? And instead of just hearing crickets, each person at that needed to be at that meeting would have something to say, which really helps everybody else. And they may not, they don't even need to have to know that I met, you know, casually walked by each of them and asked them to you know, right. bring up this topic at the meeting. Right. Yeah. I learned that when I was teaching that class at UNH last semester, one of the, cause I said, man, you know, trying to get these people to engage is, yeah. is nuts. But as soon as I did call on someone that was, you know, seemingly very reserved, you know, not the type of person to just be outspoken, as soon as I called yeah. on them and asked a specific question, they had an answer that probably went on five minutes and it was That's like, cool. oh, holy yeah. crap. You like you, you, you know, like not only can you think that that wasn't a surprise, but you can articulate your thoughts. That's amazing. And I mentioned that to another professor and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to start every class or at some point in each class, like make a list of all the people that are there and check them off when, when they speak. And if they haven't spoken, oh, yeah. go to them and, and prompt them. I like your idea of preparing people with a class. It, it was a little easier a little to, yeah. to know that people were prepared. So it yeah. wasn't, I mean, yes, I was calling them on them out of the blue, but like, I knew that they had, they, they had something to say. I didn't know exactly what they had to say, but you, you know, like the deck was stacked, right? So yeah, it was pre-stacked and that's all you need yeah. is, yeah, knowing yeah, and then leveraging that stacked deck, like calling on those people and pointing at them and saying, hey, you have a thing. Tell me what your thing. And, and yeah. you know, you're the host, right? It's, it's Yeah, right. And if you are the host or you're, you, part of your job is to build trust and safety, Yeah, right? The, people are not going to speak up unless they trust, they have some kind of trust that they're not going to lose credibility and that it's a safe place to bring up things and to, and topics and, you know, that may be uncomfortable. Yep. Uh, and so you, you need to build that and, uh, ask, having somebody bring a question. Mo often you'll say, Hey, you know, do you have something, you, you know, about this? Most people will say, well, yeah, I'm not sure about that. And I would say, great. Could you please bring that up at the meeting? I'll, I'll make sure, you know, you have an opportunity, but yeah. if they don't you need to kind of help them out. That's great. Um, Smart. Yeah. So the the other thing I, I think is important is that agenda that you've developed, um, you, you know, with maybe by yourself or with a couple of other people is you share that agenda before you get to the meeting. So everybody knows what's going on and, you know, how you're going to do it. And, I, you know, I, I, I have mixed feelings about these these next two recommendations. OK. But first is no phones in the meeting. Right. And I get that one to the distraction part. But the other one is to consider not allowing any or not having people bring computers either. Mm. And it fosters conversation. Now, I know in this day and age, it's a little different. Uh, I, I read a study about how it's so much more effective to take notes by hand for comprehension, even though I hate doing that. Um, no, it, it's definitely better. Like, there's no right? question. I, I, I am yeah. with you. I'd, I'd much rather do them on a device where I don't have to yes. then convert them to convert it something else. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we're getting closer to the point. You know, you can snap pictures of it and keep it in your notes sure. or something like that. Um, but I thought, you know, that that's definitely something um, worth considering because you want that engagement. You want people, um, or maybe you ask someone. To, to be like the secretary, so to speak, like when you have a public meeting, um, you have someone that's the the note the person going to take the notes that he can he or she can distribute them to everyone after the meeting. Yeah, right. Um, there was one article I read where, it t and again, I have kind of mixed feeling it's about this too, but was record or transcribe 
the meetings to be more efficient so no one would have to take notes. But I think people kind of freak out if you're recording the meeting. Um, I know I would. I'd be like, why are you recording this? Yeah, you're, because then you're in performance mode. I mean, that's yeah, like having spectators, yeah. right? It but, is. It is. Yeah. 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 So I like the idea of having someone, and I don't have this in my notes, but as we talk it through and I learn more here, um, having a person that's, hey, would you mind taking notes? It can be really effective, especially when we get down to talking about action items and stuff. Yeah. Here in a, in a yes. Yes. Somebody definitely needs to be capturing action items and yeah. and putting them into, again, whatever, you know, if it's a sauna, if it's whatever your system is, but capturing, I find meetings, I had a meeting last night about migrating our Mac eCab, one of the other podcasts I do was part of okay. the Mac Observer, we're migrating it out. And so we knew some big picture stuff that needed to happen to, you know, essentially take this section of this website and move it to its own website. It's a pretty big thing to to do and make sure we get it right. And we're finally at the 90% mark, right? So it's like, okay, now we need to, we were just having a talk about where are we on this? Where, you know, where, where do we need to go? And it's like, okay, what's the day that we're going to do the move? Okay, great. So we put that, I put that on the thing. I said, what do we need to do between now and then? And, and that was actually, I was capturing into two sections of just a document. One was, uh, if they needed to be a timed thing and that went on the okay. schedule yeah. document again, backed yeah. out nice. by when the deadline is right. So it yeah. would have to therefore happen before the deadline. I know I'm saying obvious things, but that's what this is all about. It's obvious in the yeah. moment. Three days later, you're like, Oh, what are we talking? It seems so obvious in the moment. You know, that's what, that's what you're capturing. And then it was the to do's like, and, and some nitpicky things came up and it was like, great, let's put those on the list. Who's going to take it. Right. Because if you put it on the list and it's not assigned to anyone, it is assigned to no one. Right. <laughs> That's, That's right. the thing. Yeah. And so as we went through and it was like, OK, you do that. OK, I'll take this part. That makes sense. You know, and and then it was like, OK, we have a plan. Is that everything? I guarantee you one of us or more will find something that we missed. Great. No problem. Put it on the list. Yep. You know, That's no, OK. Great. Yeah. But yep. capturing those things and turning them into action items and then they're on your to do list. So it's like, oh, sweet. I know what to do. I don't have to guess. I'll go through and I can check them off. And now they're on my to-did list. I feel really good there today. Go. Yeah. Come full circle. I like it. They come full circle. Good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and just like your comment, I, I firmly believed that the meetings need to start on time, whether everybody's there or not, and they need to end on time. I really think that a 15 to 30 minute window for a meeting is plenty of time if you do these steps in advance. Yeah, we're talking about here. And I think that's ideal. I think after 30 minutes, man, people start to glaze over. Um, I love it. You mentioned standing up. I think that's terrific. If you're all together, I, I think even going for a walk is oh, yeah. just phenomenal. Yep. If you can walk and talk and it just changes the whole dynamic of, of you know, people's input and they, they tend to open up a little bit more. Uh, I think it's terrific. Um, if you've got I, energy I, going, I, I find yeah. I can go for 60 minutes, right? Like, okay. but it yeah. has to be it, it, like, if you're at the 30 minute mark and no one is engaged, it, then the meeting should end. So you it's know. more like reading, reading the room to be, Re you read the room. Expected. It's like, yeah. Okay. Like, if, yeah. are we, are we getting stuff done? Has this meeting turned from just a meeting into something more. Okay. Well, let's just keep going. Like take the momentum, but yeah, read the room like for that. sure. I like I, that. I, yeah, I want to, I, I want to highlight one of the things you said, the meeting starts on time, no matter who is there. If you wait five minutes to start every one of your meetings, you have Man. trained people that a three o'clock meeting does not start until three Oh five. Yeah. And, that's and right. that's on you. Like if, <laughs> so if you don't start on time, you are, the first lesson of the meeting is that all future meetings can start late that, yeah. you know, I always joke about it. I say, Hey, uh, it's three o'clock. Not everybody's here. Why don't we take a vote and, uh, and see how, you know, see if we want to start and everybody raises their hand. It's like, Oh, it was unanimous. We all wanted to start on time. <laughs> you know, like of course the people that weren't there didn't get to vote. That's the joke, but it, you know, it, it, it's a nice way of sending the message that we're going to start these things on time. And I love it. I mean, kind of in a, in like a condescending jackass way. I love it when someone walks into a meeting, uh, especially if it's somebody that, that, you know, feels like they are a part of whatever's happening and they walk in, you know, five, 10 minutes late 
and no one like the flow is already going yeah. and no one That's stops powerful. to catch them up. Yep. No. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. Yep. No, we just yeah, go. And if great. you want to get caught up, I mean, there's times when you can't do that. Like if the person is, oh, in, yeah. you know, is, if, if the next conversation is predicated on this one, then it's like, okay, well, let me catch you up. But I, I always make a big deal out of, oh, let me catch you up here because you're late. You know, we've already had this conversation. So here's where we are. Whatever decisions might have been made in these first seven minutes, they're done. You know, we're yes, moving. I like yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I, I read another tip recently that I thought um, – is really powerful to keep things moving forward and, and time limits is don't do status updates in the meetings, share that information before the meeting. Cause you can share that in Slack or Asana or email, whatever you're using, but update the team or the people that need those updates before your meeting. It may preclude having to meet, uh, or you may be able to have a quick meeting in the hallway. You know, I love yeah. that meet in the hallway concept where you just walk them by. You're, oh yeah. Hey, what's going on? Da, 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 da. We just had a meeting, you know, um, I, I think that's great. And uh, I'm going to try to do that more because yeah, I, I like that. I definitely recall, you know, doing status updates. Um, and, you know, I'm a huge fan of casual meetings. One of the best things and I've talked about here on the show before is, you know, I used to barbecue for our team at Tech Restore on, the, you know, on Fridays. And I'd get out. The for warehouse. those of you in the in the South, he used to grill. Before, grill. That's right. We meeting. call it a grill or a cookout. A cookout. A cookout. My, there you uh, go. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. my uh, daughter's boyfriend out in, in from Pennsylvania, and he's like, "Well, this is you know barbecue, it's a cookout." So yeah. <clears throat> I would cook at the cookout and uh, make you know kind of breaks the ice. I'm making stuff for everybody, and we'd sit down, and I would just start asking questions. You know, hey, what's going on? What are you doing this weekend? But I would get to some questions I would like to ask about what's going on in the warehouse or what's going on in the, you know, in this department. And in a, it, I just found that the flow of conversation was just really open and, you know, it wasn't a uh, formal sit down. I feel, you know, and people were just open and people that never had spoken up in a meeting, unless I'd asked them and given them a question beforehand, they just were, were just more, you know, after I put a big thing of ribs on their plate, uh, yeah. they were more apt to answer my, <laughs> answer my question. So try, I, I, we had a lot of success with it. I loved it. Um, ribs on the plate and a, and a beer in their hand, things change. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. And, it, yeah. and it, and it comes back to that building trust and safety. Yes. Cause people want to know that if they speak up and they tell you like, I, I definitely have had a problem in, in my management career of letting optimism sometimes overshadow negative things or problem solving. Yeah, for sure. And so I, I have to hold back my optimism, my, you know, uh, sunny disposition, if you will, and <laughs> let that. And so when you're just hanging out, I just found that people are, are just more real and more willing to talk to you. Um, and, and helps build, build trust and safety safety. So, um, those are some tips. I have a couple more quick little things. Yeah, no, this is, I, I, I like this. You're, you're that your point about, not letting optimism keep you from solving problems. I, I mean, there there's It'd be challenging. Yeah. But, but there's like, there's two extremes here, right? You, you can obsess, you can admire the problem, right. To steal a phrase from one yeah. of our previous episodes, or you can ignore the problem. And generally speaking, neither one of those is the right thing. There are times when one of those is, but generally speaking, you want to acknowledge the problem because you know, I find it super easy to just sweep the problem under the rug and keep trucking forward. Right. Because so many times momentum and optimism can 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 win the day. However, I always feel so much better when we stop and say, hey, I have a problem. You know, let's talk yeah. about this. And and then you're actually fixing things as opposed to just letting momentum win the day. <laughs> You know, yeah, I like it. It's yeah. Good to recognize it. It, yeah. it is good to recognize it. And I, it's yeah. funny because I'll, you know, I'll have some issue and it's like, wow, I, I could make this go away, but I should tell somebody about it before I make it go away. You, you know, yeah. and, and it almost always is solved more efficiently or in a better way or in a more permanent way when it's actually addressed. So, yeah, yeah, Great. yeah, it's good. Yeah. And, and, you know, so when you're, we talked about ending the meeting and how to get, you know, get to that point, but when you get to that point, y you need to be talking about what action items are needed to accomplish the purpose of the meeting. Right. Totally. And, and, 
Apple uses this this uh, acronym, which I like. Is they call it a direct, directly responsible individual, a DRI. Ooh. And uh, every task is assigned a DRI and a timeline before the meeting is ended. So you have this. Let's say you have a thirty minute hard stop. You know, twenty minutes come down. And you've identified some things that need to be done. Uh, you're going to assign DRIs and what's the dates and this kind of thing, and and then you go. And that's kind of your to your point where you're making these notes on the yeah. time and someone has to be assigned. So that, that becomes the directly responsible individual. I thought that was kind of cool. Yep. Um, and that, you know, then you can get updates. Okay. I'll update you in Slack. I'll update this. These are the roadblocks I hit. Here's how I can, you know, went through. Yeah. That. Right. Uh, yeah. It doesn't mean that it, no. that you're the only one that is, you know, going to work on solving the problem. You're just, right. the, you're the, it's your responsibility to to tell someone if you can't solve it yourself. Yeah, and what resources you what need. What do you need? I to, yeah. yeah, I need to, oh, you may even need more training to get it done. Sure. Or you may need to hire an outside consultant or a designer or an engineer, a programmer. That's all within the scope of being a DRI. Yeah. And But you are just going to oversee that this task is going to get done. Maybe it has to have a budget. Maybe it's longer term. But you're, you know, you're the champion for that. Yeah, uh, you're, that you're it. You're not, it, it's, you're not the ORI. You're not the only responsible yes. individual. You are the directly responsible individual. It's your, this is your rodeo. Go make it happen and let us know what you need. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. So, you know, I'm not a fan of meetings in general, but when you have, you know, when you use some of these tactics, they can be very productive. Um, your team often likes to get together, um, especially if you're remote. I like how, Dave, you know, you've pulled your group together and have Zoom meetings just to touch base with everybody. Yeah. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, so, um, like you know. to me, especially over the last two years, but it's been true throughout because we've always been remote. But, you know, the... The time I would rather be super efficient about the work part and then relax the, uh, you know, the drive for efficiency and turn it into a social thing. If people really yeah. do need that, you know, the community and the camaraderie of the workplace, because when you're remote, that doesn't happen accidentally. There is no water cooler that people are just going to right. bump into each other at. So you you kind of have to. And I, I you know, at, at Mac Observer, especially. You know, we we would have a, a stand up. We called it a stand up, but we didn't stand up well, unless one of us was at our standing desk. But, you know, we had a stand up meeting every day at, at noon Eastern, which sort of coordinated all the various time zones that we, you know, that we had on the team. And it was it was just to talk about and hash out topics for the day, talk through what might be happening and, and you know, how to approach it and how to cover it and make sure that everybody had their questions answered. And we had a you know, there would be. On, on any given day, there might be seven people at this thing. So we had gotten 15 minutes was like the max that we would let this go because otherwise it was spending everyone's time, which might turn yeah, into sure. wasting everyone's time. And when COVID hit, it became instantly obvious that we had to relax that limitation. Mm. Most, most days we still were in that 10 to 20 minute range of a meeting, but there were some days where it was obvious one or more of us uh, needed to just be with people and, you know, because we had a lot of people that were on the team that were living alone. And so it's yeah, like, right, you know, right. OK, if it goes 45 minutes once a week, you know what? That's OK. Turns out yes. we all don't really have anything else to do, you know, <laughs> so no, that's great. I, I think that's a good uh, thing to recognize is there is a social aspect to getting people together, especially if you're working remotely. And that should be factored into all this stuff we're, it should. we're talking about. Yeah. And we, we even made it, we were explicit about it. You know, Brian and I at, at first for the first few days of, we were like, let's not be so militant about ending the meeting. Let's just sort of let it happen organically. And then I could see the staff starting to freak out at that 20 minute mark. Like, Whoa, we've gone long. It's like, Oh, right. They don't know what they don't know. So yes. let's, let's be explicit about this. Hey, if somebody needs to go, go, you know, it's fine. You're you're not mandated to be here, you know, for this longer portion of it. But also, if you need to be here, let's be here for each other when we can. And and everybody cool. really appreciate it. I, I mean, it was yeah, a I yeah, it was a great, really a great thing. It's honestly, it is, it is the thing I miss the most about having sold that company. Yeah, is That's is interesting getting together with the that team. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I still can talk to them. Like, it's not like sure. we're not allowed to talk to each other, but it's, we're not, it's not part of our day anymore. 
Yeah. 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 Well, it's great. Well, I enjoyed talking about this. I enjoyed, you know, I always enjoy covering these different topics. If you've got some tips that we missed to how you make your meetings really rock, feedback at businessshow.co or go to businessshow.co slash LinkedIn and go to our LinkedIn mastermind group that we have up there and uh, post your uh, tips. We'd love to share them with uh, everybody else. Yeah. Good stuff. These are two good topics today, man. This is, I liked it. It is good. (laughs) What's that? Seven years. Seven years. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. Thanks for hanging out with us, folks. Thanks for listening. Thanks for sending in your feedback. We love to hear from you. And uh, feedback at businessshow.co. Check out our sponsor, of course, hunterdouglas.com slash SBS. And keep living that charmed life. We'll see you next week. We'll see you next week.